Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, my name is Devin Adams. I am an FCT instructor. That's a Fortinet certified trainer here in Tempe, Arizona for Dynamic Worldwide. And we're continuing with our authentication and our FortiGate demo. So in our last videos, we installed the DC agent and also the collector agent and successfully passed on logins to the uh, FortiGate. So very cool. But guess what guys, in real life, all right, things don't work as smoothly as they do in labs. And also, they don't work as smoothly as videos that you can, you can pause, right? Or you can, um, <laughs> you can magically make things fix behind the scenes. So uh, that's why I purposely try not to edit my videos, and that's why they're kind of long and horrible. But uh, I think it's more realistic and has more added value. So I suck for your benefit. And uh, my students know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyways, so, uh, but in this, in this video particularly, particularly, uh, I want to go ahead and before we hop into our user-based access control, uh, I want to do some troubleshooting. Some troubleshooting specifically with the collector agent. Now, a few things you're going to notice uh, that's different in my GNS3 here uh, is that I cleaned it up a little bit. I couldn't stand looking at the generic icons that come from GNS3. Uh, that only takes a moment, by the way, to import in. Uh, I'm going to do a separate lab on that or a separate video on how to bling out your, your NSC4 lab. So um, that's where the icons came from. They're still the same machines. But I also added three more Windows 7 machines. And this is what I love about GNS3 because now we can have multiple users, right, coming in from multiple departments and uh, at the same time. Okay, so and even though I, I'm running this on a laptop, an older laptop, uh, it's still only using about 30% of my CPU, and these things are trying to update. I've already joined them to the domain and all that good stuff, so just a little heads up there. Anyway, so remember, that's our goal, is to do some troubleshooting because, let's go into our domain controller, all right? And uh, I actually let this thing run last night. It did some updates. It rebooted itself. That's okay. I logged back in. I'm like, yes, it's time to do some some demos and I I came up here to show logged in users and yeah I saw that people were logged in and that's awesome you know I'm like oh it's still working we're going to uh, troubleshoot that in this video too what that means and all that good stuff but essentially the DC agent is working so I know that for sure uh, it better be it's living on the same machine but then when I went to go see the show service status right where's my FortiGate I'm like what the flip Someone ran off with my FortiGate. It could happen. Maybe we forgot our physical security. Uh, <laughs> use a cable lock. No. Uh, so here you go, guys. No, it's it's there. I mean, it's it's up. It's it's working. We'll do a get system status. I mean, that's that's nothing bad. All right. So that's interesting. So I went ahead and I um, went to my support laptop here, right? Because this is the one I've been using. And I want to go check out that FortiGate and see what's going on there. All right. Okay. So uh, 10.0.1.254. All right. I also installed an IIS server for later. And uh, we'll talk about that later on. Anyways, so here we go. And I'm just like, man, I, you know, I had everything working last night. I did it all punch drunk because it was so late. I have small kids I have to put down not put down permanently but put to sleep so nope it even sound worse put to bed all right so <laughs> here we go and uh, I go to my um, I go to my monitor right because uh, logins were being passed through to the FortiGate and I go to my um, firewall user monitors and uh, I apologize once again guys about it being a little slower uh, and then I turned this on. I'm like, what the heck? It was working last night. What's going on? And I came over here to my users and devices, and I went to my my uh, single sign-on server, and I see this big little do not enter sign. <laughs> so that do not enter sign means that it's not communicating. All right? So I'm like, what the heck? Right? Then I'm all thinking to myself, well, can I still query the, uh, the FortiGate? And there's a simple way to test that. We don't even need to bust out debug commands. All we need to do is go to LDAP servers here, right? Because we configured this in the beginning of these videos. Double click and just hit the test button again. See the toast right here, the little successful notification that popped up? So it's talking. 
but what the heck is going on? All right, so uh, before we go any further, and like I said, I mean, this is why I record these, these horribly long, stupid videos, right? To show you stuff that's broken. So let's do a real quick review of what's going on. So, and I did take the time to actually, <laughs> I had to make up for, for last night's horrible video. Sorry guys, I'm all slurring my words. Um, I don't drink, so I was honestly just being tired, but here we go. Let's review what's happening here and how this whole process works real quickly. So we have to do this before we can really dive into troubleshooting. Now, I suggest anyone that is utilizing any authentication to always reference your 40 OS handbook. That is the 40 Bible. You should have a copy, use the online version, match it to your 40 OS that you're using, so on and so forth. It reads like a textbook. It gives you examples. It is awesome. This is also the stuff that we kind of learn when you take one of my classes too, but essentially what's happening here is that we have users authenticating to a domain controller, and that happens independently of the 40 gates, okay? But we have installed a DC agent, meaning a little service that runs on the domain controller in the form of a DLL, and we confirmed that in an earlier video, all right? And uh, it, it goes ahead and it recognizes that login and it passes it along to a collector agent. Now, I have the collector agent and the domain controller living on the same box. Now, depending on the size of your infrastructure, you might not want that. You might want the collector agent on a different server or a independent server. You're going to have to size that and that, that comes from testing and, you know, planning and all that fun stuff so uh, but if it stops talking if you cannot get these two to talk you would not see let me hop over there real quick you would not see this show monitor DCs we're seeing this it's fine I mean I, I got it right that is working just fine so uh, but if it wasn't the first thing that you want to do is go to your firewall and make sure that you have UDP port 8002 listening on the collector agent all right so I don't have to worry about that because it's on the same box but uh, and last night I couldn't remember what protocols they were I'm like uh it's one of the two anyways but now the the DC agent to the collector is going to be UDP 8002 okay open that up here and you might want to go look in your domain controller firewall and also see if that port is open. All right. So because remember, it's, it's bi-directional that you have to define the rules. So now once that login event gets to the collector agent, the collector agent then packages up the, um, the logins, right? Puts them all in a neat little package and passes them to the FortiGate using TCP. 8,000. Now, this is the part that's broken when I came back, and I have absolutely no idea what's going on. I really don't. So, um, but I bet you anything, it's probably a host firewall problem. All right. So, because the 40 gate's listening, I know nothing's changed with my 40 gate, but my DC did reboot after an update. So, um, but uh, to once again to verify that, repetition here, guys, uh, you click the show service status, right? And there's no 40 gate there. That's why I also suggested earlier to pin the, the configuration agent application onto your taskbar uh, because this has wonderful tools to do your troubleshooting. All right. So, um, all right. Well, that's, that's, that's cool. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here now. So let's stop right there. Actually, let me just finish what's going on here with the whole flow. Um, once it passes it to the FortiGate. The FortiGate then matches an IP address with a user, right? And uh, that's what the collector agent does. Uh, it, it, it essentially takes the registered workstation that the user's on. It does a, a, a resolution with DNS with the domain controller, finds the IP address, gives the name, gives the IP address. So when Bob the Builder over here authenticates or passively authenticates through the FortiGate and matches his IP address. The CIS has been logged into the domain controller and he's unaware of it. All right, but he has authenticated. So, um, anyways, so let's not worry about the collector agent doing the verifications quite yet. So let's figure out what's going on with the collector agent and the uh, the FortiGate. So let's start there. All right, so I'm going to go on my do uh, my DC. And it did reboot after some updates. So the first thing I'm going to check is what? My firewall, right? So I'm going to go to my uh, start menu. 
I can actually uh, right click here and just jump right to control panel. Okay. All right, so there's the firewall. And if you guys noticed, I actually had domain or uh, I had private network firewall turned off. All right, so um, when it rejoined my, when it, when it rejoined, it is the domain controller. When it came back to life, right, it picked a different profile and that profile was domain networks and so it turned it on by default holy crap I did I thought I explicitly told it not to use firewalls see how we can turn those on and off you know what though I'm gonna do the right thing okay I'm gonna do the right thing and I am going to uh, you know open up that connection so because a lot of us won't turn off our domain firewalls I've heard people say you do I've heard people say you don't not a Microsoft class, so I'm just going to fix it. Are you guys ready? Allow an app or feature through the firewall. Okay. And last night I did, let's see here, is there a collector agent? Let's see. Let's see if it shows up here. I am not seeing it. Well, hot dog. Let's do a. Let's do a cancel here. All right, and let's go to advanced settings instead. And we're going to make a outbound rule. And if you notice here, we don't have the Fortinet collector listed. All right, the collector agent. Oh, look at that collector agent is allowed let's take a look there I think that's what I added last night when I was punch drunk right protocols and ports any no I don't know hmm well that's okay let's go ahead and anyways uh, let's go ahead and just open up the actual port though so let's do a new rule Let's do a port. We'll hit next. Now that we know that it's TCP and it's 8000 to talk to the FortiGate. All right, we're going to hit next. We're going to say allow connection for all. And we're going to say uh, collector to FortiGate. Talk to me. Of course, you'd be more professional in real life, but all right. I'm a big fan of metadata, by the way. So make sure you're you're labeling your rules. So, all right. Let's let's see if that fixed it. So, um, here we go. Let's go to our collector agent. Show services. All right. I am still not getting a acknowledgement back. Boo. Let's try the other direction. All right. So, because like you said, we did this direction. Maybe we also need this direction to be allowed through. So, um, and let's actually go to our firewall and hit refresh. Yeah. See, still not listening. So, all right. No problem. Let's go back to our domain controller and now let's do a inbound rule all right see I don't see anything for that collector agent all right so let's go ahead and do a new rule and of course in my my test environments um, I just turn off the domain controller firewall and that's not realistic so let's say you know what 8,000 can come back in that's what we're doing here. And I did do that right. 8,000. Okay. Hit next. Allow the connection for every type of firewall. And I'll say FortiGate to Collector. And if this doesn't work, guys, this is when we start busting out the debug flows or we start busting out the Wireshark or what have you and see what's going on. 
um, and there's a whole bunch of commands to do that but hopefully you won't have to go there all right so we'll say uh, talk to me again I don't know so there we go all right and I don't think there's any kind of like commit or anything like that so um, Inbound connections that do not match a rule about. Outbounds do not match are allowed. Yep, yep, yep. So, all right. There's also probably, there's probably also, um, uh, what you call it? There's probably also some logs that we can look here. So, all right. So where's our firewall? Didn't I just do a FortiGate to collector agent? Okay, so. All right, guys. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. What is that? It's our FortiGate. So we do have to allow bidirectional communication. So watch this. Are you guys ready? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, my gosh. I annoy myself. So there you go. Um, by the way, on my Fortinet slides... Um, they only have the direction going this way, and uh, guess what? I'm gonna I'm gonna write in going forward. So this is why I also like you guys asking me questions, my my students, my participants. Um, it's because I learn too, right? I mean, I assume so much by just just doing canned labs, and that's not real life. So guys, yeah, opening up the firewall did fix the collector agent. That is awesome. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and close these guys out and verify it also on our FortiGate. So let's go back not to our sales machine. Let's go back to this guy right here on our support machine and let's hit the refresh. Um, all right. Look at that. Good times there. So guys, there you go. And I didn't know my domain controller did that I literally just opened it up nothing worked I'm like well that's because it's me you know that's that's what happens in real life so I hope that was valuable so we just fixed the first problem all right so let's verify also that login events are now continuing to be reported to the FortiGate all right so um, let's go to our do, 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 monitor let's go to our Firewall user monitor. What are we seeing, guys? Yeah, our FSSO users. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. So it's working. Now, uh, wait, let me go back to my topology here. Let's just go ahead and just for kicks. Uh, Bring in a completely new person that the FortiGate does not know. This is Jane, our manager, right? So she's logging into her computer for the first time, about to boss people around. Maybe she'll fire someone before lunch. Good old Jane. All right, so once we get a preparing desktop, we know that she's successfully authenticated with the firewall, or not with the firewall, with the domain controller. So. I swear if I ever get the money, I'm just going to get the biggest, baddest machine possible so I can do these virtualization labs to like the umpth uh, level. Here we go. So that's my, my way of also apologizing guys for how slow it is. So there you go. Uh, she did log in. So let's hop back to our domain controller. All right. Let's go to our collector agent and let's just verify that. Do we see a Jane? Oh, we do see a Jane. All right. Good stuff there. Let's go to our support PC where our FortiGate is living and hit refresh and there she is alright guys so there you go it is now working it was a firewall problem now let's go ahead and address the next issue so the domain controller when it authenticates a user and this is all Microsoft okay it gives it a session that's good for eight hours by default all right, that's a typical work day. So you know this if you work too long, then suddenly things aren't working, and you have to you have to relog in or something to get your your session token to to re uh, stamp out by the ticket granting ticket system. 
blah, 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 Kerberos. Anyways, uh, it does not register when people log out. The, the, the domain controller doesn't care. When you leave, you leave, right? That's the whole purpose of having Kerberos in there. So, you know, you don't have to bombard the domain controller with login events. You just do it with the, the ticket granting tickets and the service tickets. Anyways, so, but that is why also we're seeing statuses here is not verified. Now, Jane's verified just because of the age of it. We know that it's okay. All right, so uh, to, to get around that, all right, our collector agent also has a job. Let me just close this. That every five minutes, it's going to go out there to the machines, right? And they are going to, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just I'll just be technical, okay. Every five minutes, it's going to go out to these client machines using TCP 139 or 445, all right, and read the registry of the machine. And in the Windows registry, there's a current user field, all right? So, and in that hive or field or key or whatever you want to call it, the current user that's logged in is listed. And that's how the collector agent says, okay, cool, uh, Bill is still logged in or Jane is still logged in. Now, if it cannot reach that machine using these ports, like maybe you ask the domain, can, uh, the sysadmin to open these up on all the clients and they're like, uh, no, but... Honestly, guys, in most Windows environments, one of those are probably open because of SMB. Anyways, but um, or maybe you have machines that are not Windows. All right. I'm thinking maybe I'll put a Mac in this topology and show you how to do single sign on even with a Macintosh. All right. But a Macintosh doesn't have a Windows registry. So if that is the case, it still doesn't mean that it's broken. It just means let me get back to my collector agent that after 480 minutes, we're going to consider that person dead and take them out of our logged in group okay um, so but if we adjust that to zero it says you know what don't go out there and verify workstations it's just not worth it all right and let me actually demo why this is or could be important okay um, so for example here let's see who's logged in for sure so we have uh, we have bill here all right, now Bill is on our support, our support laptop. Okay, so let's go back to our support laptop and let's just go ahead and, uh, yeah, just log off. He's done for the day. He's like, I'm playing hooky. Wow, wow. Right. So, the domain controller didn't know that he's gone. You know, it doesn't care. It just he's gone for the day. He's gone. Okay, and so in our collector agent, if we say test workstation for Billy see how he was on PC one I didn't rename that support I should have uh, and I go to test workstation see how it's kind of hanging there failed to connect it couldn't do it so this does not mean none of this is working it just says hey you know what he might be there he might not be there I don't know all right. The only problem is if 10.01.100 comes through the FortiGate, it's going to assume that it's who? Bill and allow them through using Bill's group, which is support. All right. So that's going to be up to you what kind of security risk that could be possible with that. Now, that's everything to do with security, right, guys? It's a, it's a checks and balances. It's a weights. It's a risk analysis. Take my security plus class, right? We'll talk all week about that. Anyways, um, so, uh, and let's just go ahead and uh, see what I mean. So let's load up the FortiGate on the domain controller this time, and we'll look at the logged in users, and, and Bill will still be there. But once eight hours rolls around, it'll, it'll drop him off, and we can adjust that timer if we want to. All right, so here we go. Looks like I'm still logged in here. Oh, no, no, I'm not. All right, so admin, okay. And if I come down to my, let's see here, if I come down to my monitor tab and I come to my firewall users, I mean, Bill is there, so boo. 
Anyways, but that's okay. That's okay, honestly, because what happens if uh, Bill and Devin are sharing a computer and uh, Devin logs into that support laptop? All right, so here we go. We're going to switch users. We're going to do Devin instead. I think I already logged in once, so there's a desktop prepared. All right, once I start seeing things happening here, I'll switch back. All right, so there we go. So let's go back to our domain controller. Let's look at our collector agent. All right, see how Bill's there. Let's go ahead and hit refresh now. And it turns into Devin. And now on our dom on our uh, FortiGate, and when we hit refresh, it's Devin. It knows that two people can't live on one IP address. This is also why they suggest if you're an admin, uh, and you're you're constantly logging all over the place internally, maybe maybe not to have yourself collected, <laughs> all right? Uh, especially if you do a lot of remote access support. Anyways, different topic. But I'm just saying, guys, this still can work without user verification. It's all up to you. But how do we fix that? So I read the 40 OS manual last night just to refresh my memory. I had to with these ports actually, and uh, it it just mentions firewalls right maybe there's some kind of firewall rule on the client machine that's not allowing one of these through okay so I found that it's using either WMI or remote registry to read the registry so they're two separate services there and a lot of times in a domain environment one of them or one of the two are going to be on so um, anyways so what I would do the very first thing that I do the most less intrusive option that I found it's to tell the collector agent to use something other than WMI to access that registry. So I'm going to try that first. All right. So I am going to go over to my, um, uh, let's see here. It's advanced settings. And you see this workstation check? Use WMI. Okay. And I'm going to say, Don't use WMI, just use remote registry service. All right. All right, everything refreshed. Now let's go back to our show login users. Everyone's status instantly turned to OK. Really? Failed to connect. Ah, okay. I got my hopes up for, for nothing there. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, let's take a look at Jane. Let's try Jane. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. That's fine. That's fine. So I tried that in my, my previous um, uh, demo, and it actually fixed it just turning off WMI and using remote registry without me touching anything on the client. But I'm actually glad that it broke. All right. And the reason why is because now we can go and troubleshoot it. So um, so now in the second part, and like I said, I, I record these videos way too long. But um, in the second part, let's go ahead and troubleshoot that uh, collector agent verifying the user's PCs. All right. So we're just going to pick a... Let's pick on Devin here. So I'm going to use his machine. And just for one more time, I'm just going to verify it just for for the sake of, you know, control. Here we go. Nope. Still failed. Boo. All right. So uh, let's hit close. And now, and you know what? I'm also going to turn on WMI because that didn't even seem to help anything. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is allow um, allow those ports open on my end users machine. And you can actually apply these to group policy if you want to do it on a larger scale. But like I said, talk to your sysadmin and make sure that your guys' security goals mesh well together. All right. Depending on your organization's uh, security policies, meaning your actual security policies uh, written from the top down. So uh, but let's go to our 40 demo. All right. And we're going to use this guy right here. OK. And then let's go ahead and mess with the firewall. Hopefully, we can't do this without admin rights, but we'll see. 
All right. Windows firewall. So the easiest way to test this, look, it thinks it's a work private, not even a domain network. The easy way to test to see if it's a firewall rule is to do what, guys? Turn it off. Turn it off and see if it works. If it works, we know that it's going to be a firewall rule. And then we can just punch a administrator. We can punch a, a rule open to get the verification to work. All right, so here we go. <laughs> Not recommended. And I don't recommend you turning these things off unless you're using FortiClient or something already. Anyways, so it's off. And now let's see if we can get a verification. If we do, we, we know we just need to go and punch open a, a rule here. So uh, let's go back to the domain controller. Let's go to show logged in users. All right, let's go to Devon and let's do test station. User is still logged in. Ta-da, there you guys go. Straight up a firewall rule. All right, so let's go ahead and get that taken care of. Okay, and there's probably better ways to do this. Um, not gonna do them on the, on the wing here because I wing these videos, all right? Uh, so here we go. Let's go to our support machine again. And I am going to turn back on that firewall. So, right guys? Um, oh, heck no. All right, here we go. Last thing we want is Paul, the sales guy, to have no, no firewall. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and do a allow program or feature through the firewall. And let's see if we can't just find one of the rules here already. All right. Okay. Look at that. Windows management instrumentation. Hmm. Wasn't that the feature that we were using? Hmm. I wonder if that would fix it. Hmm. Pretty interesting. Let's take a look. Ah, look at that. Look at that. Still didn't like me just turning on WMI. Isn't that funny? I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you. Can't just go by the textbook, right? So, uh, all right. So, no problem. No problem. Let's keep on going. Because remember, it also uses remote registry. Uh, and, and you know what? That actually falls underneath another one of these services. And I cannot remember which one it is. Is it remote service management? Is it... Ah, uh, see, I'd have to go back to my my MCSA days, which I haven't done in a, a minute. So, um, but you know what? That's fine, and I'll tell you why. Because we know that we can do what? Go to Advanced Settings and punch through what you call it. Punch open one of those firewall ports. So, if it ever loads. Yeah, I'm telling you, because these are all new machines, by the way, that I dragged and dropped. They're all like, update me, update me. So, all right, so let's go ahead and do a, an inbound rule and an outbound rule. All right, so let's do a right click. No, come on. There we go, new rule. And you know what, though? I swear to goodness, hold up. Maybe that service is already listed here. All right, network discovery. Do, 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 do. All right, so I wonder if I can look at the column settings here. No, I better not just do that on, on what I'm being filmed here. All right, so I mean, we have. We have this guy turned on, right? And it still didn't, still didn't do it, did it? Interesting. 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 And there is a remote registry permission. All right. I just wanted to double check that. Like I said, probably an easy, easy uh, Google search to to figure that out for sure, but. 
I don't mind doing a, an individual rule. So here we go, we'll say port. And going back to our troubleshooting slide, it's gonna be TCP 139445, which is also some NetBIOS and SMB um, ports that are open. Once again, get with your sysadmin and talk about the, the risk involved. Okay, so, but here we go, 139. Okay, and four, four, five. I'll just do both. Allow the connection. I don't want public. And we'll say uh, two, the 40 collector. It's not called the 40 collector, but you start teaching enough 40 gate stuff, everything's a 40. I asked my wife to pick up some 40 milk the other day. I wish that wasn't a true story, but it was. So, all right, here we go. TCP, 139, 445, all right. Next. And I actually screwed up naming that. Inbound should have been from 40 collector. So I'll just say, really to the 40 connector. I hope you guys are following along with this. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, okay, sure. All right, guys, uh, moment of truth, right? And honestly, if this doesn't work, I will have to, to pause and just do some research. Uh, like I said, probably a few Google searches to figure out what actual services to allow through. Um, but let's take a look. Ah, uh, look at that. See? Yeah, it allowed it through. And if you think about it, we really didn't turn on any new services. All right, so it was the stuff that was natively running in our domain anyways. We were just allowing those ports open. And I hope that makes sense. So it's not like we're going in there and flipping on things that weren't turned on already. Um, but yeah, so user is still logged on. So, okay, well, let's go ahead and that did fix it. So there you guys go. Uh, that was fixing the test verification. I'm going to do Sally next just to prove that it's still broken on Sally. And man, this video is going on way too long, guys. So um, I wouldn't sit there and watch a 40 minute YouTube video. All right. So, but you know what? I don't care. I'm going to fix Sally's machine just to have a, a, a control. And what do I mean by that is we don't just get lucky, right? <laughs> so Sally's on the marketing machine. See, I knew there was a reason why. I knew there was a reason why my laptop sounded like it wanted to die. In other words, all the fans were kicked on, the hard drives were spinning. Yeah, I hate you, Windows updates. All right. Um, all right, we'll do it for Paul. Paul's still here. So, okay, Paul, thank you for not updating your computer. So, uh, P at SSW0RD, nice unsecure password. Okay, and uh, let me just make sure Paul isn't working. <laughs> nope, he is not working. So let's fix him. He'll be our he'll be our control. So, all right. So let's go over here. Let's go to our uh, control panel. All right. Not like our sales guys ever leave early from work. And by the way, I, I pick on sales people because I did. I did sales for a bit, so not very long. I wasn't very good at it, but. Um, I can pick on that whole subculture. So here we go. Firewall rules. So we do have domain networks turned on. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, go to advanced settings now that we know that it's just easier to open up those two ports in both directions. So admin is straight or. And then my admin password. Dun dun dun. And by the way, why isn't it kicking Paul off on our FortiGates? Remember, in my earlier videos, administrator is one of the users I told the collector not to report to the FortiGates because that would have erased Paul and his IP address, even though I might be sitting down with Paul doing this. So just a little heads up there. So let's do an inbound rule, new rule, and we'll call this from 
40 collector. Get the terminology right now. Okay, a little resolution problem there. All right, TCP. Remember the ports? It was 139, comma, 445. Okay. Next. Next. Nope. Next. We'll say from 40 collector. In real life, don't forget your metadata, your descriptions, and your comments, right? So when you tell your peeps to go kiss the world off and walk out on them, people can figure out what you're doing. All right, here we go. 139, comma, 445. Next. Okay, allow the connections. Not for public. Next. And we'll say 2, 40 collector okay and uh, that's all we did on the other machine to get it to work so let's go back to our domain controller let's do a little testing the workstation <laughs> has no valid IP address what what so check this out guys um, so, every 60 seconds, the FortiGate goes out there and makes sure that the IP address and the domain name of the machine, okay, match up. So, I logged Paul back in. It shouldn't have affected the IP address, but I'll still come down here. Nope, I'm on the domain controller. I'll go to the sales machine anyways. And that can happen too. Um, I'm going to keep that for a different video if someone asks me for it in class. Um, all right, so here we go. I'll do an IP config. Ah, he is 101. So I wonder why that's not a, saying that it's a, a valid IP address. So, interesting. Huh, okay. Not seen that one before, actually. So, just because I do not want to deal with it. <laughs> is that horrible? I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't ready for that one. Um, I'm going to log him off. Because remember, our goal here was just uh, to fix that setting. I had, I have never seen that one before. So, um, and it's usually when people have a very busy environment. There's multiple NICs. Maybe there's a Wi-Fi card. Maybe there's a wired uh, um, docking station. Right? People are picking it up, moving to conferencing rooms, so on and so forth. And that IP address can change. Right? So. Um, Yeah, he's still there. Right, still there. Look, Sally's Sally's updates. Okay, so. Aw, oh, good old Sally. Nope, that's the sales PC. That's the sales PC. Let me try logging off Devin. While we're waiting. Alright, so I'm logged off. I gotta show something working here, right? Test workstation. That was the first, the first PC that we punched open the firewall rule. I mean the yeah, in the host firewall. See how we now know that Devin is no longer logged in, and we can actually remove him from our our firewall. So, in fact, let's test that. Let's see how long it takes for the collector to report that to the Fortigates. Now, normally we're not just sitting here watching this all, all happen. So there's, there's a, an understanding that there'll be some kind of delay here. But eventually, Devin will drop off. I promise. So it just doesn't happen 100% automatically. But pretty darn close. I've still felt like it was, um, it was still pretty darn good so see Devin okay 
test workstation, it should still say Devin's no longer logged on. And it's still showing Paul as not having a valid IP address. So uh, let's go ahead and, well, that makes sense. We rebooted the machine. Um, oh, that's support. My bad. Let's go back to sales. All right. Alt control delete. Let's log Paul back in, which will register his machine. And another way to check that, guys, I don't even want to know how long this video has been going. If you go to your uh, server manager, all right, you do have a DNS management tool. So if you go over here to tools, and you go over to DNS, all right, DC1. There we are. See the sales PC and the IP address. So it's it's valid. I have no idea why I thought it wasn't. Right? So Okay. Oh, look at that. Did you guys see what just happened? Did you guys just see what happened? What just happened? It said OK for the Paul. Now this means that OK means that we verified, right, that um, that uh, we can reach the machine. So, but uh, just for giggles here, all right, I want to make sure that okay, just want to make sure it loaded up completely. I'm going to test it individually, and it should say Paul's logged on. Why is it saying that? Weird, guys. That is just weird. Uh, station has no valid IP address. It does have a valid IP address. Users no longer logged on. All right, so if I clear the user cache and restart the service, all the events are going to disappear. Now, here's the thing, guys. When we're doing our configuration and things like that, uh, the caching and the logging and all that stuff, too, can also play into a, a part of things not working correctly. Um, yeah. So, because I have no idea why it, it thinks that, except for maybe there is some erroneous, you know, uh, mapping of his user machine. So, uh, sure. Let's clear it. And then I'm ending the video. I swear I've been doing this video for like six hours now. So, all right. See how no one now is known? Nobody is known, no. So, I wonder what happens to the FortiGate once we do that. Let's hop over to the FortiGate and see what's going on. So, hit refresh. Well, Devin dropped off finally. <laughs> so, and by the way, like, I think it's, uh, I forget the timers exactly, but it, it syncs between the two. All right, so now that I've cleared all the caches, you got to be careful because the last thing we want to do is everyone to drop off authentication wise. So, um, and that would if I just sat here and, and clicked. Uh, but kind of neat, just to prove to you guys also that Devin did disappear. But like I said, we're usually just not sitting here waiting, right? Waiting for that to happen. So. Uh, let me create one more login event, and, and guys, if it doesn't work after that, I'm going to have to come back to it just simply because this has been going on way too long, this video, and, and hopefully this is enough um, to be helpful. I, I think it would have been, um, and if you guys do have any other kind of weird errors, uh, just let me know. Maybe I could uh, record another video and drop it into the series later on, so but let's, uh, let's generate a login event here. All right. There it is. Okay. IP address. Okay. Test workstation. Yeah. I'm going to have to figure that out. I have no idea why it says that, even though 
even though it, it's recognizing Paul. So, and it's coming back as an okay and not unverified. Yeah, isn't that weird? I wonder if that's a bug with the collector agent. <gasps> Should I report that to the TAC? All right, anyways. And, and guys, that is also why we have support contracts with Fortinet. So YouTube is not a replacement for the TAC. Um, meaning like, you know, don't be afraid to call them up. They're helpful. And sometimes there are bugs. So read your release notes. You'll know all about them. So I'm going to go ahead and log in Bill and see if we get the same kind of error. And then I'm going to call this one quits. So the next set of videos, by the way, guys, are going to be using these logins, right, to do access control. And then I think I'm going to end the series there. So um, and then, like I said, as as uh, people ask more questions in class or want to see additional demos, I'll, I'll do those. So, um, all right, let's take a look. Let's hit a little refresh now. As we can see, Bill is now logged in. Test workstation. See, user is logged on. What a matter, Paul. It's because, you know what, you're on sales. That's the problem, Paul. That's the problem. All right, so I'm um, <laughs> just joking. Uh, so guys, go ahead and stop watching. Uh, you're probably no one's watching, um, but uh, I'm I'm still going to, to to get to the bottom of this. So uh, did Sally's computer finish updating? So I'm going to log back on Sally real quickly, and I'm going to fix her. Uh, fix her firewall here, and I'm going to see if her workstation gives the same weird invalid IP. So. Um, May maybe does it have to do with the Fortinet? Fortigate passing out the IP addresses? I don't think so. I mean, everything matched up, so. All right, um, let's do that one more time. And we can see this, by the way, if we pop back open to our, I have too many windows open. Um, pop back over to our domain controller and hit refresh. Sally will appear. Ta-da! Okay, uh, but we haven't opened up her her uh, firewall so and if this was a production network I would probably do all of this in group policy after I confirmed that that was the fix and it was all okay with my security team and also my company's security policies and security goals to, to allow those ports to be listened for but if not guys it's really not the end of the world and I really hope you saw that at the beginning of the um, of the of the very long video here you can just shut it off so if someone logs into that machine it will administrate or it will replace that user all right so let me just make that rule real quick okay go on you can do it there you go buddy buddy all right, supports, Whoop. and we want one three nine four four five. Okay, all connections, awesomeness, net public. All right, and we'll say, uh, uh, what's this inbound? So from forty collector. It's not called that, but just having a little little fun. Yes, that's what I consider fun, guys. I'm pretty lame. All right. Okay. So, 139-445. Allow the connections. Connect connections. Oops. Wow. I got to fix that resolution. Here we go. And we'll say... Uh, let's see, this is outbound, so 2, uh, 40 collector, all right, so, okay, all right, and then we'll go back to DC1, we'll click uh, Sally, all right, we'll hit test machine, Yeah, look at that. Workstation has no valid IP address. So the only thing that I can think of, honestly, guys, off the top of my head, right, is that when it's doing the DNS lookups, it's doing IP6 instead of IP4. That's the only thing that I can think of. 
So um, if that is the case, I'm going to have to figure out and how to troubleshoot that. Um, then again, it's like, why why is it not, though, for, for Bill's machine? So I'm going to have to leave that for another video. Um, because you know what? Other than that, I mean, it is working. So um, just one problem after the other, I guess. So, hey, who just dropped off? Did you guys see that? Huh. Was that was that Paul? Did we have Paul logged in? Weird. All right, guys. Well, like I said, I'll have to I'll have to continue with this with this video a little bit later. No, he's there. Oh, that was weird, guys. I wonder if it's also maybe a limitation of my virtual environment because here's another tip, guys. You have to have um, at least 64K between a lot of these devices to make it happen. That's the kind of default one they said in the 40 OS. I wonder if like uh, I'm not overwhelming some part of my virtual environment, but Paul did come back, by the way. Thank you, Paul, for coming back. So... Um, <laughs> anyways, and like I said, I'll I'll uh, try to figure out why it's saying that it has no IP address and get back to you guys. But hopefully, some of that was helpful. Maybe not. Uh, it still has the record of my longest YouTube video ever. And uh, next time when we get back, guys, uh, we will do um, using these users and groups to do access control. Probably won't happen today, but maybe it will. I don't know. But all right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys later.